is electric. Hi everyone, it's that time of month. Uh, I'm just in the middle of trying to do my end of month statistics video and I just thought I would share something that I looked at this morning. Now, some people um, watch the news, some people read a newspaper or listen to the news on the radio. Uh, my news is data. It's the data that comes from all my systems and it's the news about how my systems are doing. So pretty much every day I'm looking at data and analyzing what's going on and why, etc. And I sort of like that. I like the analysis. I like the asking questions and finding out why are things working the way they are. This morning I had a look at heating. I looked at the daily heating numbers in total and individually by device. And I compared that to last year, last year for the same period, 1st of October through to the 5th of November. Um, and looked at it side by side, and I was quite surprised. We're using a lot more heating, so it appears, than um, I thought I would. I thought it'd be quite similar. But also, there was a couple of other surprises in there. So that that analysis, that learning of looking at the data, I thought I'd share that with you, and uh, it'd make a very quick, short video, just going through how did my heating energy usage for the first month and a few days, etc., compare to last year, and uh, why is it different? So this is the spreadsheet I use. Um, it's a daily spreadsheet, so I update it every day or with every day's data. And uh, if I scroll across, there's a heating section, so I've got the dates to the left, which helps me for graphing. Then I've got uh, a column for logs, Toshiba, the air conditioning units, our cloakroom, our ensuite, our infrared heater, the bed, bathroom, Charlotte's room, dehumidifier, and total. So if I just screen print that, which I have, and then, uh, I can cut and paste across into another sheet and then basically copy 2022 data alongside 2023 and then I can compare it side by side and uh, have a look what's actually going on and here it is. So I started looking at this comparison because the air conditioning numbers were higher this year than they were last year and I wanted to understand why. So what I've done here is plotted the total kilowatt hours for every form of heating, not just the air conditioning and compared the two years. In blue, it's last year. In orange, it's this year. To my surprise, initially, uh, at the start of October, we used a lot less energy for heating because it was so much warmer. It was actually up to about 23 degrees in 2023, where in 2022, the temperature was between 14 and 18, maybe even up to 19, just about every day of the month. But this year, from about the 18th, 19th onwards, we had a bit of a cold snap. So the orange spikes are much higher and we've used a lot more heating. So actually, weather has been the biggest difference, it seems. Totaling up all the individual devices comes to 110.9 kilowatt hours for the period, so a little over a month. And the majority of it, as you'd expect, coming from the air conditioning heating, the heat pump system, 64.8 kilowatt hours, the cloakroom, 8.6, the infrared heater in the cloakroom, 18.1, the ensuite, 11.3, the bathroom and Charlotte's bedroom, both zero. Charlotte moved out in February, so um, we haven't had any heating in this period in uh, her bathroom and bedroom. Then dehumidification, 7.9 kilowatt hours. So in total, 110.9. Compared to last year, though, so starting with the total on the right-hand side, 105.9 kilowatt hours versus 110.9. It's actually quite similar. But the air conditioning, we've used a lot more air conditioning heating this year. It's 64.8 versus 38.8 last year. And I was thinking, well, are we just freer with the energy? Have we just used it more? Well, we have actually lit the log fire four times this year. And last year it was only one. So we've actually saved a bit more heating as well. So it does look like we've used more heating. And it is because it's a couple of degrees colder. Cloakroom, though, 8.6 kilowatt hours versus 16.3 last year. But we've also added the infrared heater in the cloakroom this year, which we didn't have last year, an extra 18.1 kilowatt hours. So that room has been warmer um, with the two heaters and we've used more energy as a result. The ensuite I've actually used less, considerably less this year than last year. But we didn't use any heating this year in the bathroom and Charlotte's bedroom, as I said. So we've saved six, seven kilowatt hours there. But the one that's interesting here, the dehumidification, 7.9 kilowatt hours versus 21.9. Why did we have to dehumidify so much last year? 
And then it dawned on me last year, we used the EcoAir desiccant dehumidifier in our bedroom upstairs. And we used that every day, basically, um, as a heater. So because it generated as much heat as it did dehumidification, our bedroom was nice and warm. So we used 21.9 kilowatt hours dehumidifying. This year, we were using a heat pump dehumidifier, which doesn't put out as much heat, but does a good job with dehumidification. And we've been using the air conditioning system upstairs for heating. It's been much more comfortable upstairs as a result of using the air conditioning. So it looks like using the air conditioning and the dehumidifier are offsetting each other. Um, it's a different way of providing the heat in the bedroom in the evening. And I've got to say, using the air con more and the dehumidification less is actually working better this year. It does feel more natural and more comfortable. So I'm very happy to have done that. So yeah, I'm a fan of heat pump dehumidifiers. So although we've been using more energy for actually heating, because we've had some savings on the ensuite, bathroom, Charlotte's room, and dehumidification, actually we've used the same amount of kilowatt hours roughly within five. And I think that's pretty good. Even though temperatures on average have been about two degrees lower this October than last October. So for those of you that are already converting away from gas and oil and going electric, obviously you've got the fun of this as well. Analyzing how many kilowatt hours are you using and where are you using it? How much are you saving compared to when you had oil and gas and all those great things? Uh, I just love the data, but it's, it's more than just the numbers. It's about an understanding. It's about the news. You know, I've got a review here that's helped me understand why we're using the energy we're using. And I really like that. Hope you've enjoyed this short video and uh, hope you're enjoying this colder weather and whatever heating system you have at home. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.